Okay, day four on the Maricopa Trail. Whew, it was a long night last night. Unfortunately, broke a tent pole. This is actually the second time that this particular tent pole has broken on this Nemo tent. That's unfortunate. And um, we pitched the tent so that our heads would be up and we wouldn't be level off level from side to side. But unfortunately, that also meant when the horrible windstorm kicked up in the middle of the night, it came up right across the side of the tent instead of um, going through it, which is the way you're supposed to do it with the wind. So that was basically a tense, miserable night, hoping that the tent wouldn't collapse entirely. <laughs> Not much sleep to be had, but oh well, we don't have a huge day to do today if we go along with the schedule. It's a less than 12 mile day with a visit into Cave Creek Regional Park, um, which is upcoming next. We should be there in about five or six miles. We're getting a little bit later start today because yeah, I didn't sleep. But it's another nice, perfect weather day for hiking in the Phoenix area. So let's roll. It is so nice out here. It's nice and cool. The birds are cheeping. Ah, oh, we've got some good cloud cover, but the wind finally left. So we get a little reprieve from that. Yeah, right there. All right. It was so long. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, beautiful morning in the desert. Can't wait to see Cave Creek Regional Park. I think it's supposed to be one of the prettiest in the system. Yee yee. They're serious about their signage out here. Well, the last ones were a little better. Like, if you see people on motorized vehicles, call the cops, report it. This one's like, eh, we may charge you. I don't know, depends on whether or not I'm feeling cute. It's illegal anyway, though, so. Yeah, well, glad we stopped here to kind of futz around. We took like a 90 degree turn to get to this uh, junction here, but, and both the signs say to continue that way, but, it doesn't mention that this is actually the spur for Cave Creek Regional Park, apparently, even though the signs told us to not go this way. But as you can see, like when you, you would be walking up back to the sign from that direction. So I'm not sure why they don't have a sign here at this junction um, directing or indicating the um, entry to Cave Creek Regional Park, but this is where we're going. And like most of the parks in Maricopa County, this is another spur, balloon, and then backtrack to this junction where we'll continue forward to Spur Cross Ranch. So from where we were last time, we actually backtracked a little bit because when I zoomed in on Gaia, it showed like this uh, first junction where we made that first hard um, turn to the left was actually the spur to um, get to Cave Creek, even though there wasn't any kind of signage or indication that this was where you turned to go. And we came out here and now there's signs uh, at, I think this is Rockaway Hills Boulevard or something like that. This road that's on the other side of that concrete wall. Oh yeah, Rockaway Hills Road, it says right there. And then, anyway, now here there's Maricopa Trail signs. But it's like over here, as if this mess here is the actual Maricopa Trail. It might be where we were going to um, peel off the first time, but I certainly don't recommend it. That way is way better maintained and taken care of. And then you come out here to uh, get to the road. There's another Maricopa Trail sign up there. It's just so weird that they don't have any of that signage directing you to Cave Creek on the actual loop where you need to um, turn. That's why you carry maps, I guess, and have some idea of where you're going. But this trail is so well marked that they really do spoil you with all of that stuff. Now this area down in this wash burned, don't know when, but fairly recently, wow. So that's what a scorched saguaro looks like. 
Unfortunately, it's hard to see because the light's not very good, but I guess you can do comparative. Green, not burned. Mer, sad cactus. Oh, that is Gunsight Peak, right up there. It's a pretty appropriate name. It does kind of look like a site. Neat. It is beautiful out here. This is like the first time, well, pretty much since we started that we're feeling like really like out here. Like this is a real trail, like a real live trail we're hiking. I don't know when all of this burned. Some of those rocks are crazy though. Look at those jagged, crazy rocks. Oof, these look mean. They look a little violent. So the cactus doesn't stab you. Oh, look at that saguaro. A face plant. Crazy to see the, how the burn affects this area. But like already new life is starting to come back in. Look at all the little flowers. Hello, little flowers. Already Arizona lupin. Who knows, it's been a long time since I was out here playing with flowers. Look at that white one over there. I took a picture of that to put up on iNaturalist later because I don't know what it is. Here's some poppies that are getting ready to um, spread their little poppy wings and fly. Oh, and here's a better view of a, a charred saguaro. This thing has been roasted. Poor buddy. All right, here we are at Cave Creek Regional Park. That's weird. <laughs> I guess if you're on a horse, you might want to go over the horse thing, but what the heck. Hi, right, here again, we got, we're on the Go John Trail. This is where we get to, I think, uh, there's a spur to daytime parking and a restroom yay go john trail is either way nice and a bench Woohoo! i think we're gonna sit on that bench for a minute oh, it's beautiful out here oh my goodness this is the most traily trail we've got to be on away from everything we've only seen three people since we got to this area Oof. i'm feeling like the northeast segment of this trail is probably going to be the best because it's the most out there and wild this area i mean like we straight up walked through some very very urban areas on this walk so this part i think is going to be the best part definitely glad we get to kind of slow slow roll through it and enjoy it because i mean damn look at that that's gorgeous i bet sunsets out here are just spectacular normally i'd be pitching these painted rocks to discourage other people from leaving their painted rock trash out in the wilderness, but I guess I'll let that one go. Beautiful view. I don't know if Mr. Carnicle's out here somewhere, but got a great view for eternity. Right, I guess we're done climbing for a little bit. And go down into, I see parking. Looks like a toilet down there. That's probably where the group of 16 people we just um, crossed paths with came from. I haven't seen any horses out here, but there's clearly one up here today. Here goes on hiker. That is nice. A beautiful park. All right, well, the sun's trying to come out, but it's still nice and overcast and cool. We're almost to the Gojon day use area or parking area for the trail that we've been walking on this is so beautiful i mean look at this doesn't look good does this background make me look old and haggard because i feel like it does although this is all way more old and haggard than me <laughs> anyway we're gonna make our way to the nature center 
hopefully find a place to plug in, charge up a little bit, since it hasn't really been solar friendly weather pretty much since we started on Tuesday. Things are gonna be running out of juice soon. And uh, I was just in contact a little bit yesterday with a, a friend of mine who's uh, the editor at Phoenix Magazine. And they are also partnered with the Maricopa Trail and Park Foundation. So they might be interested in this hike because as far as I know, nobody has uh, through hiked this trail before. So I thought it'd be an interesting story. At any rate, they have a, I guess a reporter out here somewhere today doing a, a video of Cave Creek Regional Park and possibly the Maricopa Trail. So hopefully we're able to get in touch with her or you know make contact with her today. But I have no idea what she looks like. I just found this dog in a tree dog ornament I thought oh maybe someone's puppy died you know and they left it here as a memorial we are in the like dead in the middle of the you know developed part of the park the play area is right there I almost just got eaten by a giant scorpion in there crazy but no it turns out it's an ornament and then it's kind of like one of those it says I need a home I found a quilted heart so to me, it seems like this may just be like more, it's like the painted rocks, but quilted hearts. It's still bad l &T, no matter how cute it is. It's not a memorial, you know. I guess maybe it's a little bit hypocritical because I did leave the cop rock up, but whatever. Anyway, I'm taking this with me. It's cute, first of all. Second of all, somebody wrote on it in pencil. And the next time it does rain, the whole tag is going to be disintegrated. So... Let's go look up the website, I guess. I'm not going to try and make these people any more famous. It's, if your idea is to just leave quilted hearts out in nature as trash, it's no better than the rocks. Well, this is, well, this is cool. Like right below the, the plate area, there's um, ramadas, covered ramada areas, a whole bunch of them for picnics. They come with trash cans, barbecue, check that out we'll be able to fill up to our hearts delight here that's fantastic so and they have plugs um on the inside as well so that one's a little bit cold it's actually raining again like just sprinkles it's no big deal but it is cold so we're going to try this lower one and see if it's less of a wind tunnel so we can charge our uh, phones up have a second coffee maybe some lunch we are in no rush today and hopefully give a Mayor, the lady from Phoenix Magazine, a chance to make contact. Although they're supposed to make a video out here today. I don't know if they're going to do it or not. So weather is not particularly ideal. It's not unideal though either. It's actually pretty nice. Just wish there was a little bit more sun. Oh, it's a reasonably nice suit. Got the phone charged up to 80%. Man, I gotta tell you, when it's cold out here like this, we had sun for like five minutes and it was awesome. And it was back to being cold again. So even though we had cover, which we actually didn't even want because we wanted to be out in the sun and plugs and water and benches um, to eat, it's cold. So we didn't really want to hang out. So we're going to continue forward. I got the phone charged back up to at least 80%. Unfortunately, there's no solar capacity, especially for my crappy solar panel. But um. Yeah, we're going to make our way over to the nature center and then continue on back out of the park. We unfortunately missed Mare from um, Phoenix Magazine, so hopefully I'll be able to catch up with her at a later time. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just have to en enjoy all this scenery. Poor us, boo. I think standard with all Maricopa County Park units comes a Sonoran Desert Tortoise somewhere near the visitor center. Here's the one at Crave Creek Regional Park. But unfortunately, it's so cold, our tortoise is hiding, probably in his little hole there. He's already eight, and it's too cold for swimming. That's nice though that they give him his own little swimming pool. This is a pretty nice habitat for desert tortoise. All open air and everything. He doesn't feel like, you know, completely locked up.
All right, so nice visit in the visitor center. This is another nice facility. Maricopa County Parks does it right. I gotta tell you, like their facilities are all super nice. We went in to go pay our hiker entry fee of $2 a person, but the volunteer at the register wasn't sure how to charge us. So we uh, got to circumvent this particular payment, but she was appreciative that we're honest and we're trying to do the right thing. However, so this is like my main thing, like when we're in the van or whatever, we're hiking usually, like I don't pick anything up, but you know, ah, uh, they got me. They got me. I have this book's counterpart for Colorado, which was just returned to me by uh, one of the guys that helped us out on the CDT, which was super nice. But um, yeah, so now I got this heavy, stupid thing to carry around. But you know, I'll look at flowers for the next few days until we catch a ride up out of the McDowell Sonoran Preserve in a few days, and then I can leave the book back with the van. But I, I just can't help myself. I can't, I gotta know what I'm looking at. And plus, I want to know if, the, if I can eat this. Can I eat this plant? I totally want to know. Oh, which reminds me, they have an interpretive garden around the, the nature center. So you can see the air. They have the little signs for everything. And they have little indicators of what the, you know, mostly what the indigenous uses of the plants are, which I really appreciate. So at any rate, Cave Creek, awesome. Ch -ch Check it out. Somebody found another toy. Oh, this wasn't hard to see. Look at that thing. It's like a space suit with a string on it. Possibly part of Ronald McDonald's outfit. All right, people. This is why <laughs> you don't free your helium balloons. Where do you think they end up? They end up out here. Mostly in places where humans probably won't see them again, but they definitely screw up the environment. We're almost back to, we're on the Overton Trail, almost back to the string in the balloon loop. That is the exploration of Cave Creek. Actually, I think that's the trail right down there. I think that's the Gojon Trail we took to get into the park. But because there's some sunlight now, it's a really beautiful view of the mountains over there. And I guess one thing about the burning here is, you know, unobstructed views of virtually everything. Gorgeous. Oh, hey, I don't even need to pull out my wildflower book to know a blue dick when I see one. Ah, awesome. It is nice that getting to see some of the, um, there are some wildflowers blooming, even in this, actually, especially in this burn area. I am excited though to like get that book out. Like, I don't know what this pink, Nightcrawler calls them a fraggle bush. I thought it was like a mimosa, but I'm not, actually sure so but now i'm like oh woohoo there's some more blue dicks what's up blue dicks it's amazing and those things grow like all over the place i didn't realize but you know, like oh they're edible from uh actually every part of them is edible but they're a little bit harder to get at the bulbs because they're a bulb they're one of the lily family here's some more blue dicks they're part of the lily family but they're a little bit more difficult to get out of ground like this, as you can imagine, than, you know, like rich, earthy, loamy type dirt like you would find in Oregon, where I've also seen, I haven't seen them, but I've seen friends po post pictures of blue dicks there. I am just loving this part of the trail, especially now that there's actually some sun. It was like, when there's no sun at all, it's a little bit hard to get at stuff. It's a little flat out here, but as soon as the sun starts coming in, 
and playing off things, you get views like this. And I just find it, oh my gosh, it makes my heart sing. I just find it absolutely spectacular, but I love the desert, you know? I grew up desert adjacent, basically reclaimed desert. And, uh, but not the Sonoran Desert, it's more the Mojave Desert. This is just, hmm, I love the Sonoran Desert. It is gorgeous, you know? People are afraid of deserts, and because there's definitely a lot of stuff out here that'll fuck you up. But, you know, it's an altogether amenable, beautiful place if uh, you're open-minded to it. It's hard to tell, but that white, ashy-looking cross over there is where a saguaro fell and burned. Isn't that crazy? Like, we're still in this burn area where a lot of the saguaro survived, but not that guy. This is the kind of trophy hunting I'm about. Yeah. Jelly. Fuck your balloons. All right, and thus ends our illustrious circuit, or semi-circuit of Cave Creek Regional Park. I, I still didn't, I didn't get the story behind the Gojon. There's like a Gojon trailhead, Gojon trail. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna have to go look that up because I'm super interested now. Although right now I want a flower kit because now I got a wildflower book and now all I see is flowers. It's like, oh, look, 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 look. A whole mess of flowers. Flowers all over the place. The place is lousy with flowers. And now I'll be able to like refer to my little book that I'm carrying around with all its weight and identify these guys, see if I could eat them. All right, well, we are back at the, uh, the junctions. We're back to the main loop. So we're gonna go ahead and head towards Spur Cross Ranch. We cast water, another batch of water at uh, the end of a dead end road up here where the other day we found like a posse of bros on bikes. So it's Friday. Originally I had planned for us to camp there, but because it's Friday evening, probably not gonna happen. Unfortunately, I don't know how far the uh, full round trip circuit was to do the spur and loop in Cave Creek Regional Park because I forgot to turn on Gaia I forgot to start Gaia recording this morning when we started. So I missed um, a significant amount. I turned it on again, like uh, somewhere in the loop on the Gojon Trail. So I'm just missing actually a little bit. Just have to backtrack and do some math. But in the meantime, I'm not going to. Oh, look, traffic cone. <laughs> and so much random stuff in the desert. Crazy. Give you an idea of what we're looking at as we continue towards Spur Cross. Beautiful out here. Mm, spring in the desert. Yeah, for people who name natural formations after the obvious. This is probably called chimney rock. Eh, pretty cool though. It's just sort of all by itself. Poking up out of nothing. Looking out over everything. Ooh, and plenty of lichen. I'm liking it. biplane bros up there. Oh my goodness. It is amazing how much noise those things make. They've been at it pretty much all day. All right, 
days. So we're approaching the road where actually crawlers off collecting the second cache we put out the other day by the biker bros. This is basically like a not quite, not yet built housing area. There's like a fully nice road. Like it looks like they had put the roads in for a new housing development and that's about it. So we were originally, we were supposed to be camping here on tomorrow night and but it's only like not even four o'clock yet and even though we have totally dilly dallied all over the place you know it's still almost three more hours of light so and only five more miles or so to the next water at the um jewel of the something preserve i can't remember what it's called but it's gorgeous we're gonna hang out here and you know play with water and stuff like that maybe eat some more food and then I'm sure we'll press on because it's just too early to stop and camp here. Plus, I imagine, like, uh, in a little bit, it's probably going to get busy here with people coming out to uh, party it is Friday night. Yeah, look at this. Here's... Here's like the opposite of yesterday or the day before when we opted to walk on the road because it was clear and the trail was a rocky mess. Here, actually, uh, you can't drive any further than here, apparently. But uh, yeah, they keep this trail nice. Yeah, I have so many props to the people that do this trail because like they have done a pretty smashing job of um, keeping it well marked for the most part and really well maintained. I mean, look at this. This is nice. Right here we have, it's like a shooting range, shooting gallery set up to go right across the trail. Awesome. Now, don't do this section at night, kids. Cause it looks like, ooh, it looks like they're set up to do this today. Mm, we out. All right, it's like a little after five. Maricopa Day 4 is over. We've done only nine miles since I remembered to turn on Gaia today. I don't think we probably did any more than 12 or 13 miles a day. Um, we are stopping here because um, we're on um, state trust land now, but we're approaching the boundary for Spur Cross Conservation Area where we can't camp and Jewel of the Creek, where, which is private property, actually, we can't camp there either. So, as much as I hate to do stuff like this, first of all, we're having to stop before it's like, like not even six yet, that's sad. We've only done like 13 miles, but we're still like well into, like on day four, we're into day six in terms of like the scheduled mileage. So, hey, I think we're doing all right. And we're doing one of the things I, is my biggest pet peeve, but, Unfortunately, sometimes it's absolutely necessary, and that is <laughs> right on trail. Yep, that's right. But, you know, look at what we're dealing with here. The entire desert is full of lava rocks, pumice, choya, cactus. Basically a bunch of stuff that would probably you know, entirely ruin our gear. Definitely the ground sheets, possibly, probably his sleep pad because it's uh, not the closed cell. It's completely uh, um, open, open cell <laughs> air. So he'd be sleeping on the ground very soon because yeah, this stuff is all really hard on everything. So it sucks, but it's late enough in the day and we're in a weird enough place on this trail and not in a park, like an actual park that it is, it is what it is. What does it get up tomorrow morning? Well, like usual, I don't anticipate a whole lot of traffic out here early tomorrow morning either. But yeah, that's it. That's the end of the day. Ah, ooh, I get to have shells and cheese. I didn't bring a stove this trip, but I do have a ton of surprasada salami. So I'm trading up some of my salami for some shells and cheese. So we're doing potluck dinner tonight. Yay!